Bonjour de Paris! Here's everything you need to know about spending a weekend in Paris as a last-minute trip planner like myself. First of all, it's very important that you choose a hotel or Airbnb which is close to a metro station so that you're well connected to the city. We chose to stay in Ibis Hotel and while it seemed quite lavish on the outside, the room and the bath were not that big but since this was a budget purchase, I actually did not mind it and anyway, I was more interested in exploring the city and not staying in the hotel and therefore also sorry I do not have any footage of the room. However, on our last day of the trip, we decided to take breakfast, which was quite good. I would say that I would expect more from a hotel like this, but the buffet was actually not bad. It is recommended to get a Navigo pass which costs around 30 bucks for a week and you can go all over Paris using trains and buses. It acts like a digital ticket and if your stay is longer you can add even more tickets to it. However, since we were there only for a weekend, it was quite pricey so what I would recommend is that in this case it's better if you buy just 5 to 6 tickets per head and it won't cost you more than 10 to 12 bucks. So you can buy them at the metro station from the service center. I think that's the easiest way to get them and then you're good to go. If you plan on going to museums or places that require tickets, make sure that you book them online in advance because the spontaneity will only lead to disappointment in such cases. We went to see the catacombs of Paris, but sadly all the tickets were sold out for the weekend. So on day one of our trip, we ended up going to Arc de Triomphe, which honors the people who fought during French Revolution as well as other Napoleonic wars. And we also took a stroll down Champs-Élysées, which is one of the most beautiful avenues in the world. We were lucky enough to find seats at La Dorée, which is a famous French pastry shop known for coming up with macarons as we know them today. I tried their iconic Espanol macaron, which was filled with raspberries and lychee. It tasted light and refreshing, but was definitely pricey at 12 euros a piece. Post our dessert break, we continued walking on Champs-Élysées and saw the glorious Egyptian Luxor obelisk on our way to the nighttime sparkling Eiffel Tower. We passed by the beautiful Alexander Bridge over the Sin River.
We also saw the Flame of Liberty, which is a replica of the Flame of Statue of Liberty and is a monument that marked Franco-American friendship. But it is also a memorial spot for Lady Dinah now due to her sad demise there. Most of my friends always told me that Paris is very overhyped and it is not all that but the sight of the Eiffel itself was just so magnificent for me that it was definitely worth the hype. Don't waste your money on vending machines because chances are they will eat your change like ours and also be aware of pickpockets and scammers in crowded spaces. Since we could not get last minute tickets for most of the places within Paris, on day 2 we went to see the Palace of Versailles instead. Immersed in art and history, Chateau de Versailles is truly a treat for the eyes. Just the tour of the whole palace took us back 3 hours and costed 18 euros per head, excluding the gardens which we chose to skip this time. Needless to say, the Hall of Mirrors was my favourite. We did not go to any other museums and I feel gutted that we could not go inside Louvre which is famous for Mona Lisa's painting in Napoleon's apartment because the tickets were already sold out. Our final destination on this trip was the top of the Eiffel and even though it was raining and windy, seeing the whole of Paris from the summit was spectacular. I know there is so much more to Paris but perhaps another time. Hope you guys enjoyed this vlog, I'll see you in my next one, bye! Oh, 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 oh,